to be here today. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we say thank you on today that we were able to wake up this morning. So many people did not have that privilege, that blessing, but we're glad that we did and we don't want to take it for granted. So we say thank you on today. We thank you for being in assembly today as we come together and handle the business of the church. But Father, we open up with worship so we don't forget who the one we're serving and whose church it is. So Father, we pray that you would bless this time as we hear your word, that you, that you would speak, give us the ears to hear, and the hearts to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. People of God, we already heard it read, the scripture from Romans, and this uh, from Romans 12, and I just want to look at verses 1 to 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. People of God, we are here in the book of Romans, and this book was written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Rome. Paul had never been to Rome, but it was his hope and desire to make it there. Now, most scholars agree that there was nothing really happening in Rome, but Paul wanted to write this letter to them so that they'd stay on track. Isn't that a good thing to have encouragement to stay on track? Even when you're doing it right, it's important to know that there's somebody there saying you can make it. And even if there isn't, encourage yourself. People of God, in this book, Paul lays it down so clearly that we are all sinners and we deserve condemnation. But because of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we have been saved from the condemnation that we deserve. People of God, that's called justification. It means that I'm declared not guilty. It means I'm in the court. I deserve the book to be thrown at me, but he gives me a second chance. Aren't you glad for a second chance on this morning? People of God, and in this chapter, Paul begins to explain how we as Christians should respond to the grace of God, how we should respond to how God works in our lives. He says, I beseech you, I, I ask you, I ask you this eagerly by the mercies of God. In other words, what I'm about to ask you to do, you should be able to do it because of the mercy 
of God. What I'm about to say to you in response to the mercy of God, you ought to make your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. What does that mean? That means that, that Paul is saying through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that we ought to make ourselves sacrifices, offer ourselves over to God's service, offer ourselves over to God's work. Don't run away from it, but offer yourself. Don't run away because time Times get hard off for yourself. Don't run away because people aren't listening to you. Keep on going. Paul says, offer yourself as a living sacrifice. People of God, Paul writes that just as the Jewish people in the Old Testament offered, offered animals as sacrifices to God, the Christians should offer ourselves, our bodies, as living sacrifice. And this is your reasonable service. This is, this is what we ought to do because of what Christ has done in our lives. We would be crazy to hoard everything that Jesus has done for us and not share it with somebody else. We, this is our great commission. <laughs> what he called us to do now people of God I don't know about you but everything that this God has done for me he's worthy of me living for him he's worthy of me telling him about telling telling somebody about him he's worthy of that and so he says be not conformed to this world but be transformed People have literally taken that and abused it, but what it literally means is that we ought to not be in the world system. The way the world likes to get over on people. The way the world likes to say one thing to your face and stab you in the back. The way the world, come, we, we're coming up with the elections, politicians say something and they do something totally different. Do not follow in the world systems, but be transformed by the renewing that means I'm changed, not only outward, but inward. What good is it to look nice on the outside, but your inward is jacked up? What good is that? What, what good is that? So Paul tells the church at Rome and this message to us today that we ought to be transformed. It's not good. It's not good that you walk around with the suit and you look nice on the outside, but your heart is evil. There's malice in your heart. There's jealousy and envy. Get rid of all of that and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means my mind has to change. I cannot walk into this Christian life with a mindset that I, I, it's just me and it's not we. I can't go into this Christian life with a mindset that, I, that, that, I, that is all about me. No, it's about his glory. So Paul says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will know the good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Did you, did you hear what it says? Perfect, perfect. God's will is always right. He'll always take you where you need to go. Always follow where God takes you. Never try to go your own way because it always turns out it's a dead in the street. Always follow where the Lord leads. So understand, do God's will. What does that mean? That means that I need to stop saying, well, what about, what about this? What about that? What about what I want? You got to say like Jesus, not my will, but thy will be done. I don't want to go to that place. I don't, I don't want to talk to that person right now. But it's not what you want is what I'm telling you right now. People of God, if we would let that mindset control us, that we should understand that God is saying, I called you to this. I want you to do it. And sometimes we, we, we like to question God, but always understand God has the perfect way for your life. As we see in this theme, transformed. Change inwardly. And that inward should show something outward. That you can't just say that you're a Christian and your life, you're living your life and you're just nasty to people. You, 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 you cannot say that you are a Christian and you live your life and all you do is talk about people. All you do is, all you do is gossip about that and then smile in their face. No, 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 that's not a Christian. That's somebody that comes to church and leaves and, and leaves and doesn't leave transformed. When we come into settings like this, we should want to leave differently. We should want to leave differently and tell somebody else what Jesus, what we've experienced in this assembly. 
the people of God as we leave from this particular setting. Never forget that we ought to be transformed, changed, not just outwardly, but inwardly. And not just inwardly, but outwardly. That there should be something. You will know them by the fruit that they bear. You should have some fruit that's showing forth. And so we thank God on today. And we praise God that God is transforming and God is working in each and every one of our lives. So follow what God is doing. Follow his will for his will is perfect. And we know this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bible study on Tuesday, 
uh, at 7.30. We have prayer on Friday at 7.30. And then we'll have Sunday morning worship on Sunday at 10 a.m. So we thank God for that schedule. So Tuesday and Friday at 7.30 and then Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, and we thank God for that. Also, we have a youth revival coming up. Amen. A youth revival uh, my church, St. Mark's, I'm, I'm, I'm co-hosting that with my pastor, and that'll be on September the 10th, amen, at 3 o'clock. Our guest preacher will be Minister Shaquille Garrett of the Zoe Bible Fellowship Church here in Philadelphia. And the address is 6344 North Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19126. Hoping to see you all there. Uh, hoping to see you all there. If you have any questions about that, feel free to in, uh, uh, inbox me. Uh, feel free to do that if you have any questions about that. We thank God for that on September the 10th, and we praise the Lord for that. So I just want to give God praise for all that he's done. Amen. And we give God praise. These are our announcements. God bless you, and God keep us by prayer, and show you all of our prayers. Gather into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. People of God, receive now the benediction. Go forward today full of God's love and ready to notice God in your neighbor's hungers. Go today at rest in God, and ready to struggle in loving service for your neighbors. And as you go, may you find the face of God in the hungering, feeding, wrestling, and the resting. And may I try you, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you henceforth now and forever. Amen. Praise God from all blessings full. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father. Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Moment in peace to love and serve the Lord and have a blessed week. Thanks be to God. See you on Tuesday at 7 30.